Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. Thanks for joining us today for this presentation on DCFO cable technology. My name is Shruti Shabdasan. I am the chair of the SUT Plus Aberdeen branch. And before we start, we'll show you a small video overview of what we do. Some of the ways you can keep in touch with us is through our website. So the SCT.org website has all the details about not only the Aberdeen branch, but all the other branches that are there. The LinkedIn page is the most up-to-date place where you can find information about our local branch. If you have any questions regarding this webinar or any of the events that we organize, please send us an email at sctplus at sct.org sct.org and the YouTube channel is a really good source if you've been enjoying our webinars all the recordings of our previous free webinars on topics like hydrogen offshore wind floating solar just the name of you are there please check that out and uh, I would urge you all to consider being a member of the Society for Underwater Technology because that helps us support uh, these kind of events and if you are a corporate company we are looking for corporate sponsorship as well so that's something if you are uh, happy to support our branch here locally uh, and the learning and development of young professionals in this industry then please send us an email about that and before we start i wanted to let you all know that the presentation part is being recorded and during the presentation kindly mute your microphones and uh, do not share your videos because that eats up the bandwidth with people who might have a limited internet connection and you will see that there's two options in the zoom menu so you have a q a se a section and a chat section so you monitor both but please use the q a function to ask Ronan your questions during the presentation and at the end of the presentation we will be answering them and that is it from me i will hand over to ronan kindly share your screen and we'll learn more about the all electric dc fo cables i'm sharing normally yes i am yes so hello all, so I am pleased to welcome you uh, for this presentation. Uh, thank you to uh, SUT uh, for the invitation for the presentation. Um, I am product line manager uh, for DCFO. DCFO uh, in this presentation stands for uh, 
DC power, sub, euh, fiber optic, uh, subsecontrol umbilicals. And so, uh, so we breached the, uh, these uh, DC and fiber technology from, from the uh, subsistence business to, uh, to the uh, oil and gas uh, subsecontrol business. Um, I forgot to say, I, for, I work to Alcatel submarine networks. I will talk a bit more on, on ASN uh, in this presentation. So today, uh, the agenda is, uh, is uh, so uh, first a short uh, thanks to the sponsors. Uh, then we talk a bit on who is uh, Alcatel uh, submarine networks. Then we talk about submarine internet systems of this backbone on which we're talking uh, right now. Uh, DCFO, so the roots of, uh, of DCFO systems, uh, the, uh, the features and the building blocks, the, uh, what it enables as application, what projects uh, are in execution right now, so what is the good business model, what is the status and relationship with the SPS vendors, and then marine installation is worth uh, learning a bit, and then we look at some combination with the uh, so DAS, which is a distributed acoustic sensing. Uh, which is uh, changing of fibers and microphones. So then we will, uh, we will have conclusion and then I will take your questions. So um, the, um, first I would like to uh, acknowledge uh, and say thank you to uh, Equinor and, and, and Chevron who have been sponsoring the uh, development and the qualification of this uh, technology. Equinor uh, also uh, projects of uh, Johan Kasberg, so which is a, a very large development north of uh, Norway in the Barents Sea. Breda Blick field where uh, you have full templates. Then Northern Lights, which is a carbon capture system in, in the North Sea, teams for contracting uh, the uh, DCFO system. And also the many uh, uh, other contracts which are at this stage uh, right now. So first, we are going to talk about a little bit about Alcatel Smart Networks. Now, what, what is uh, Alcatel Smart Networks? Uh, so ASN is uh, an EPCI for Internet Submarine Cables. This company has more than 150 years of experience in the submarine business since the uh, very first telegraphic cable, so in the 1850. We have installed more than 700,000 uh, kilometers of cable everywhere on the globe, so down to 8,000 meter water depth. And if you go from US to, to Japan, you have to cross the Mayana Trench. That is very deep. ASN has been deploying cable in every uh, ocean, uh, including so Greenland to Northern Alaska. Now uh, people are talking about connecting uh, Antarctica. And uh, so ASN is uh, one of the leaders in, in this business with approximately 40% market share. We are uh, actually deploying the cable around Africa, that is 40,000 kilometer system. So cable uh, in, in this uh, poster uh, installed by ASN are in yellow, and then those uh, in collaboration with uh, some others uh, are in orange, and those uh, competitors are in, in, are in purple, so you can't see them really there, but is the purpose of the extra. And then what is key in this submarine business is, is reliability. You, you have been seeing that under COVID, uh, we have all been working from home and, and, and the work and the, has not stopped. We are all relying on, on very uh, reliable uh, submarine systems to uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, business every day, and, and they don't fail. We cannot afford, we can repair these systems, I will talk about it a bit later, but we cannot uh, afford to have uh, uh, permanent failures on this system, um, otherwise we could not talk today. Satellites, uh, to people believe satellites are, are being used a lot for internet. Now, the, the, uh, you, can, you, can, you have to understand the uh, telecom cable as super highways, so we, the, the A380 planes where uh, you have to compare satellites to, to helicopters. So they can go everywhere, but uh, with very small capacity. So, ASN uh, main business is, uh, is about, let's say, telecom, but because the telecom market was cyclically, like, ASN decided to diversify in the oil and gas market. So first uh, step was to connect platforms. So connecting a platform is like connecting a, a small country or an island. And so these platforms, uh, uh, connectivity brings uh, uh, 100 gig uh, reliable uh, connectivity to, to the platform back to uh, the corporate internet. 
enabling for uh, let's say beta safety, reboot operation, and remote support. So that is the very first step. Now, if you look to the, uh, the second step, was to, to do a permanent reservoir monitoring. So permanent reservoir monitoring is to uh, measure and optimize the depletion of oil and gas reservoir. And so for that, we put an array of thousands of seismic sensors uh, as large as Paris City or London uh, on, on, on the seabed. And so, uh, and so this array is being interrogated from the top side. And thanks to the fully optical array uh, and, and sensors, this system is ultra reliable. Now, if some competitors are using electronic sensors, now this may, may, have, may have rate of failures where the, uh, the optical sensors don't fail. And, and that is very important when you have thousands of sensors. So optical technology um, is super reliable and the one we deliver. So DCFO will be uh, presented, uh, safety control, it will be presented as part of this, will be developed in this presentation. And then um, as another step in, in, in fiber optic. Um, so ASN, as an expert in fiber optic and fiber sensing, has been developing a, what is that distributed acoustic sensing interrogator that enables to change every meter of the uh, fiber as a microphone. And, and from that, you can listen to event around the umbilical and around the well or in the well. And, and then I will explain that a little bit more at the end of this presentation. So a few figures on, on, uh, on uh, ASN, so 700,000 uh, kilometer of cable in stand, that is to go to the moon and come back. 18 platforms uh, being connected with fiber, so even the largest one, which is Shell Prelude in, in, uh, in, in uh, Australia. Uh, 18,000 uh, seismic sensors uh, station installed uh, on, or on the contract on the seabed, so that is for PRM. 20 uh, subsea uh, DC-DC converters, so basically 20 templates being connected or uh, on the seabed under contract. And then the reach of the uh, dust interrogator that is 150 kilometers, which is probably the longest reach uh, on the market. So a few uh, a few uh, words on on uh, uh, ASN uh, uh, references or history in, in oil and gas. So what you see first one you have to look to the, uh, the blue ones. So the blue ones are for the connections of, of platforms. So uh, uh, if I don't know if people are seeing my mouse, we don't. Um, so I may do that. We can see your mouse. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the first one in Thailand is uh, 12 platforms in, uh, in being connected. Uh, that is for Chevron. Uh, you can say this one is 2,000 kilometers in Australia. That is probably the longest system uh, connecting platforms with Shell Prelude and Impex, which are very large set needing uh, corporate uh, uh, fiber for their daily operation. Exxon Mobil is the way you have uh, uh, Ebron uh, and Ibernia platforms, and, and they, they are they are. They are having, let's say, um, some part of some share of remote operation from the shore, where people are floated and, and saving all the trips and all the all the associated costs of having people on the platforms. So blue ones of connection of platforms, and then we looked at uh, we're looking at PRM. So that is the uh, the purple one that is to uh, uh, connect uh, to deploy these uh, seismic arrays on the seabed. So you can see Johan Katzberg, you can see uh, Svedrup and ECOFISC, so those ones in, in mainly in the, uh, in the uh, North Sea area. Some, some, some there are, let's say, Brazil looks, looks promising, or there could be some in the Gulf of Mexico as well. And now, so we looked at, we look at subsea control. So subsea control, we qualify the DCFO technology with Equinor. We have contracts for Casberg. Uh, for, uh, you have also another one for uh, Bredabric, not Ligurie, maybe. And, and so a number of contracts with uh, uh, for subsea control. What is probably uh, worth noting here is, is this technology is in, in the water since 2009, where we can see Neptune Canada is a scientific system uh, put in the water uh, in uh, 2009, so something like 13 years from now, and it's still in operation. I will talk about Neptune a bit later. So first, we, we need to talk a little bit about some uh, facts of physics and better the same for so everybody. 
Um, I want to say a bit on, on what is uh, DC versus AC, and because not everybody may be familiar or may uh, may have this uh, fact in mind. So, first of all, uh, on, on, a, on an AC cable, um, you have some uh, capacitance effects due to uh, the frequency and the and the capacitance of the uh, of the of the current and the uh, uh, the capacitance of the cable. You have capacitance losses. Um, a DC uh, cable has no is, is basically no frequency or it's and so so we, it's just we don't have capacitance losses. Now, in every cable, um, you have losses due to the uh, joule of to the ohmic left effect, which is basically uh, uh, related to uh, the uh, the uh, driven by the uh, the square of the current or the uh, invert of the of the tension. So the higher the voltage, the lower the losses. This is why the the uh, high voltage lines from the uh, nuclear plants to uh, to uh, the big cities. And now, if you collapse uh, the uh, capacitance and the uh, high voltage, indeed, you 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 further increase the uh, the losses of a low voltage AC cable compared to the uh, an high voltage DC uh, cable. So. Um, just just some figures uh, the subsequent uh, umbilicals are uh, operated typically in the range of uh, less than uh, one kilovolt 600 volts something like that and and where uh, you will see that dcfo is running at high voltage uh, so uh, let's just say word it's uh, in the range of uh, a six to 12 kV so we, the, the losses are, are much lower so thanks to that we can transport much more power on a much smaller cross section So where do you see AC? Where do you see DC? So in in your daily world uh, today, so in in your in your home, uh, you have a, a plant which is producing high voltage or medium voltage uh, power, which is transported uh, on the line up to uh, so either a, a, a big consumer, so a factory, and so for that they may accept medium voltage. Now. You as a user, you, you will not accept hundreds of thousands of volts at your home. So you need you have you need to have some way to downstep the the voltage, and so for that, you use transformers. And and so the nice thing of AC is that, and since uh, and that that was uh, one of the reasons why uh, at the time of Edison they have been uh, selecting AC is that you can use simple transformers to downstep the voltage. They didn't have electronics at that time. Now for DC. Uh, what you do is you have a producer. It could be uh, an array of uh, of solar panels, and and some of them are being uh, developed, uh, uh, for example, uh, in the desert of uh, of Australia. They want to build super large arrays to 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 transport megawatt of power, or hundreds of megawatt of power, back to Singapore, and then you transport that on a high voltage DC uh, line um, to a consumer. So, or you you and then you, if you need to downstep. You you need today some well it's better to do it with electronics. You cannot use a transformer that's for sure. And and then you got to use it. so you all all of you have a, a DC DC transformer at home. So firstly, if that is the power supply of your laptop or your uh, USB charger for your phone, but these these equipment are electronic transformers. And so these ones are commonly available today. Uh, the trick actually is to uh, make a reliable one to put on the water, and, and that is uh, our, let's say, expertise. So if we look to uh, uh, the, um, um, what is a telecom equipment, uh, a telecom system, so, so first we look. Uh, it explains the this slide explains the uh, the uh, component for a submarine DC DC powered telecom system. So I've been explaining just before that the uh, um, high voltage DC power um, was a good solution for long distances. You can understand that some of these systems are as long as probably the longest one is from uh, US to uh, Singapore, so seventeen thousand kilometers, something like this. And you can understand that you have to use um, high voltage DC power if you want to energize the full line. So the, the a submarine um, telecom system basically transport 
zero uh, and ones uh, from from uh, one continent to another. And then uh, this is done on light, so it transports light. And as as the so that is done on optical fiber, but there is some optical losses in the optical fiber. And as the optical light fades away, the optical amplifier, so that is an optical amplifier here, um, that are put uh, in series every one, uh, let's say 50 or 100 kilometers, uh, they will reamplify the signal. So a submarine uh, cable may be equipped with uh, hundreds of uh, optical amplifiers in series, so we'll take 200 from US to Japan. And so, uh, so the, the, uh, the loss of any repeater or any amplifier may be, uh, would translate in a loss of revenue or by the, 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 uh, the stop of the cable. So, so we are not allowed uh, to have faults on this system. We are allowed to have one fault uh, per every 25 years over the 200 uh, amplifiers, which means that we need to deliver super reliable uh, electronics. And, and so that is typically better than satellite, huh? if you look at the, the type of quality or the type of uh, reliability. Um, it is possible to go and repair these systems. And so it happens that you have events, uh, external events such as Fukushima, and where it's an external event, there is nothing you can do, but it's possible to repair these systems in very deep water. So that is maybe 4,000, 5,000, or even 8,000 systems. You can go and repair these systems. And so you can, as, once you have re recovered the cable on the, on the cable ship, you can, it takes a day to, uh, to make uh, a cable joint. And then it takes, of, of course, sometimes for the vessel to sail to a location falls. That's why it's better not to have falls on this system. Um, so, what is probably worth seeing here is that so the optical amplifiers are put in series on the cable. So on these systems, we 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 uh, energize these uh, optical amplifiers uh, from the copper on the cable. You can see the copper on the cable here. It's it is single copper cable, and so we feed one amp constant current on these systems. And then the voltage on the system will build up per the number of amplifiers and the distance, so that is the ohmic losses, on the cable. So you add up to have um, up to 15 kilovolts on, on this type of cables, but still running at one amp constant current. It's, it's a bit different from the, the, the power distribution you get at home, where you have constant voltage and, and you have parallel distribution, which means that you, you, you can put your equipment anywhere and you draw the current from, from a, a parallel line. There it's in series. So it has a number of benefits uh, that we'll talk about a bit later. Um, so what happened is thanks to the in series here, these systems are resilient to shunt fault, which means that you may have the cable being damaged by a trawler, for example, somewhere, exposed to, to, to with a copper exposed to water, but you can still energize end to end so from because you have one you have power equipment at so that is the here at each end of the cable and you can still energize the power having a zero volt at the shunt fault and then you can still energize end to end the system and you can still operate fully the, the telecom system we, we are reusing this type of solution next uh, for subsequent fault so on the top side of these systems you have what is power feeding equipment, which is converting the grid power to uh, high voltage DC power. You have, uh, let's say, terminal telecom equipment to pack as many wavelengths as we can into a, a, a fiber. And on the subsea, you have what is called branching unit, or we'll, we'll name it y splice a bit later, which is basically building a branch to derive a power and telecom from the, from the backbone. So that is the uh, uh, scientific system I was talking about a bit uh, before, as a reference. So that system has been in the water since 2009. So Neptune Canada is the first generation of DCFO system with uh, 100 kilowatt of power DC being fed from the uh, from the shore, and on an 800 kilometer loop. You can see the loop here. And so this goes down to 2,700 meter water depth with five yellow subsea nodes. Uh, each node converts the high voltage DC power to low voltage DC power to the user. You can see the, uh, the grapes of the, 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 the um, users in uh, orange here. Yeah? 
being and, and white being connected to the node. And so each of them is receiving, so they can plug at uh, 400 volt DC as well as uh, they get for uh, gigabit interfaces. The central photo uh, is showing a, a, a one of the subsea nodes, so just a steel frame in which we put the electronics. And so it is being installed or has been installed by a, a standard cable ship. So this system has been in the water since 2009, that is the uh, first generation of TPCFO being deployed uh, since 2009, and it, there has been no fault on the electronic uh, that we've been deploying so far. So Equinor saw uh, that solution, and they wanted to reuse that solution for uh, uh, some development in the, uh, before 2010, actually. And, and so that was Stockman, 600 kilometers step out. And so this development uh, has been later canceled, but, but uh, since uh, Equinor uh, and us have been, let's say, in very good uh, relationship. So now, just to explain a little bit the difference between a, a, a large umbilical and, and what will be a, a, what is a, a DC, a, a smaller umbilical. So that is a legacy uh, umbilical with, uh, you can see the hydraulics, you can see uh, uh, the uh, core, electrical cores in black. You can see the chemical in red, and in the white, you can see the, uh, the uh, fibers. That is uh, an assembly of, of the um, several lines. And then, so what we do is uh, if we build a DCFO system, what we do is we get either DCFO uh, assembled in the dynamic section, or in the static section, we will put DCFO standalone beside the uh, large umbilical. If we look to the, uh, if all electric uh, trees become available, we will get uh, just chemicals. We remove the hydraulics, and then the, the electrical power will replace the hydraulics. And when uh, chemical storage becomes available, or is available, depend upon the field, we can even remove a chemical line. So you can see we are coming from a very super large umbilical to a very small umbilical. umbilical. You will see uh, the size of the umbilical at the end of my presentation. So this slide is, is from Equinor. So I will just list a little bit the requirements. And so this slide is coming from Equinor, it's not my slide. Huh? Just so, so that to say that that is customer view, not ours. And it's important to understand that they brought to uh, uh, ASN uh, incredible uh, value with their expertise and, and, and the credibility actually they brought to us. Um, so they identify this technology and, and, and that it could be used for uh, as an enabler or, the, or as a cost saver for many fields and, and as an alternative to uh, expensive legacy umbilical to remove uh, so uh, bottlenecks, so improving the uh, step out of a uh, uh, distance, increasing the uh, power available for the control systems. Uh, sorry. And, and then, and then, uh, so also to offer higher availability, uh, so uh, by uh, uh, bridging a uh, field proven uh, triable uh, subsea, te subsea telecom technology. Uh, it, it also uh, shall offer independent uh, mode of operation and tolerance to, uh, with respect to an umbilical cable. So we, it, has, it has to have independent output. So the system also shall be open and based on standardized building blocks. So to use Lego blocks and then to build a, a system, whatever the field just to reuse the same blocks um, uh, on the different contracts I've been to talking about, no requalification. To connect any vendor uh, from, from an open system, as opposed to close the SPS uh, vendor uh, in interfaces or that, that are uh, yet available on, on legacy systems. And to connect uh, yet unknown applications such as uh, submarine drones or all electric trees. So the solution shall be uh, repairable or extendable, or reusing a simple uh, te telecom cable joint. And then it, it could be, it has to be uh, repairable also at sea. So just reusing the uh, repair technology available from telecom, you can repair uh, within days at sea, uh, even whatever the weather. And last bullet, uh, if required, the DCFO system uh, can be, uh, shall be recombinable with the, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to um, let's say, another part to bring power, emergency power to another area. So in, in 2012, uh, Equinor and ASN established a partnership to develop and qualify the DCFO as a new uh, subsea control infrastructure technology aligned with all and gas standards and Equinor recommendation. And since 
so we brought to ASN the, uh, this expertise and credibility I was talking about. So then, then um, they identified some value. And, and so that is not only the technical aspect, but also let's say the commercial or CapEx or, or cost. So in addition to CapEx and OPEX, uh, to, to CapEx, there is uh, OPEX uh, uh, savings and, and uh, the availability, because what is costly in oil and gas is uh, the downtime of a, of, a, of a production field. You don't physically, if you don't get out uh, the oil, you don't get money. Um, so that is this work, let's say, key uh, uh, also uh, uh, the amount of benefit. So the, the expandability um, of, 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 uh, is, is, has, has got very high value. If you don't, you don't probably count it in a very initial uh, assessment of the initial field, but expandability later on is, is really a benefit. There is uh, plenty of power uh, and, and the, uh, of, on the outlet available to connect, uh, let's say, um, Subsea recharge stations, such as uh, uh, UID, so underwater intervention drones, uh, for further saving in field operation. Um, the, uh, there is uh, some significant savings in uh, with very less dynamic risers, uh, smaller risers, more compact, uh, top act, uh, compact uh, topside equipment, meaning that smaller to rate, uh, then even smaller vessel at the end. Uh, the subsea control um, field layout can be simplified. And so the, the, what also what is nice is that the procurement of the SPS package and surf package are fully dependent. You don't need to resize the umbilical whenever you change anything on the SPS equipment. This is just standardized uh, equipment on the backbone for us. And the uh, installation also, the, uh, the lean umbilical, small umbilical means a small vessel for installation. Now, if we look to the infrastructure, so uh, the, um, this is the, uh, um, this is the, uh, let's say the backbone here. So we see, uh, first of all, uh, a field one being uh, developed with an electro hydraulic subsea control umbilical using either AC or DC power. From the top side, 100 kilowatt is fed from the uh, TCFO high voltage uh, DC backbone. And sorry. And then uh, at field one, the DCFO subsea converter downstep here, yeah, downstep the 10 kilowatt to use of voltage to a manifold that further distribute the power uh, to uh, let's say templates or wells. So this system here yeah, is ready for expansion. You can see future extension uh, ready branch uh, or dormant type. Now we extend this system. So uh, from the same backbone, and that can happen later on. Uh, so the field number two may be developed with a, a new technology or, or even with a, which can be a DC or electric that is now becoming available, or it can be developed also with another vendor than from field one. And, and so this time the uh, DCFO is feeding di directly the, the templates. So you save the manifold as well, or you may sometimes save the uh, subtirotic modules of the CDUs in the, in the, in the template. And again, we, we can have dormant phase for future extension. So in terms of application, uh, the significant power uh, available for the user and the fiber optics enables to uh, connect a new range of applications. So it could be uh, demanding uh, recharge stations uh, uh, to, uh, to recharge the um, Underwater intervention drone, so the resident uh, uh, submarines for, uh, uh, let's say, for the maintenance of the field. It could be that the fibers from DCFO can be used so uh, either to join the, uh, the telecom cable from shore, that is Casberg, the uh, Equinox case, where we join the telecom uh, fiber from shore to the DCFO cable, and then we use the same riser. We can also divert some fibers from the, the DCFO system to uh, uh, monitor so of, on the seabed for seismic activity when uh, around an injection wells. So we can we can measure the cap rock or the uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the integrity of a reservoir uh, around this well from a simple fiber and using the dash I, I will be talking about. Or it could derive fibers into the wells where you have fiber sensing into the well, and then you do measurement of the completion 
uh, or, or in the well of the flow and, and, and many, many nice things you need to measure in the well, you can do that from a simple fiber from top down. Or also what you can do is you can measure, up, you can monitor pipe leakages when the DCFO cable is along the pipeline. And as well as also you can measure for freight. So let's say a, a troller coming by, you, would, you, can, you can know about the uh, troller. So, so to say that just DCFO is a, an enabler, or you can see that as an Android platform to plug many applications on top. So that is my little summary, which is uh, a, doing a short survey of my, of my field. Then uh, we move to the, uh, uh, the building blocks of DCFO. Uh, so what we're seeing there, uh, is, is a, a, a DCFO system where, uh, so we see the building block. So uh, from the top side, we have power filling equipment feeding high voltage DC power on, 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 the, on the line. And then we have Y splices, which are able to derive, derive the power to uh, places of interest. So it's the same cable, the same building blocks, whatever the system. We can use cable joints to, to repair and extend the system whenever. We can have cable end box that we cut and we replace with a cable joint when we, when we uh, extend the system. And then we have the subsea converter, which are then stepping the high voltage power to low voltage to the user, so wells complaints. That is showing a, a typical structure. Uh, so on and, and a node, so on a node, you get 10 kilowatt uh, per each node, so per each of these. And each output there, uh, the purple output, gives you four times 2.5 kilowatt. So it could be that we, if you need, we can also supply uh, AC power. And from the top side, we, we, we bring so 50 plus 50 kilowatt of power to the user. From the top side, we can control the on-off of the output ports. Now, if we look to what has been done yet, so we put in the water, this is a Johan Kasberg uh, node. So Johan Kasberg backbone is in the water. Um, so that is the, 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 the steel structure of the frame on which we have a, a DCFO node converter, so DC-DC converter. I voted this on, on the cable here. And that is the, the node in the water, just to prove it's in the water somewhere in the barrel. So I'd be, this has been laid last year. These are the, the system in water. So Equinor Casper, I was just talking about, uh, where is nine converter. And, and so uh, uh, it has also fiber optic connection to show. It has also fiber sensing uh, array of sensors for the, the reservoir depletion monitoring. Northern lines, Equinor. So that is, uh, this one is about car carbon capture. So it has two converters, 40 kilometers of cable. Red ablix for converters, 20 kilometers of cables. And this one is a, a scientific system to be laid this year. So down to 3,500 meter water depth. So if you can show me any oil and gas system that goes deeper, I would be pleased. So it covers, it means that DCFO can cover any, any depth or any deployment for oil and gas. So this is uh, about the um, cost evaluation. So people are saying, yes, but this is going to be another cable in the water, uh, in addition to my umbilical. But yes, but this is Equinor or Statol at that time assessment slide. So if they pay for DCFO, and that is only for CAPEX, huh? as remember, I've been saying about OPEX and, and, and number of savings in operation. So you, you, you pay or you, you, you spend the money on the DCFO as EPCR, including the installation. Now, this is about the, uh, uh, the uh, you save on the umbilical cross section. We've been showing that. You save on the number of connections, because uh, I've been showing that DCFO is a fully jointed system and just have one connector at the template. You save on the uh, top side uh, power thinning equipment. We have just one and, and replacing all the others. Uh, you save on the installation because a smaller umbilical means a, a smaller vessel. And you save on the rise base because uh, a single cables or single connections uh, compared to many quads means a, a much uh, smaller uh, uh, connections and rise base. And in addition to that, you also save a number of things. So on the dynamic rises, on the installation, uh, on the turret. And so this is not captured here. The reliability of the availability of the field is also to be considered. Uh, so we know the fact that you can connect uh, many applications uh, that cannot be supported by a legacy system so shall also be considered. So when you assess a DCFO system, you shall assess at system level and not only at the cross-section of the umbilical level. 
So a few words on, on what has been done uh, with the um, um, interoperability with others. So DCFO is basically compatible with any uh, vendor. And so we passed this uh, interoperability test. We did some demonstration of amplification to any length, actually. And we can go to any distance as we are expert in that. And so it, uh, it's, uh, it can uh, connect, uh, it can be at any vendor. So, and it can be sold to any, uh, any party. So there is no restriction to that. So uh, it's not only uh, uh, restricted to Equinor, it can be sold to any party willing to, to uh, use the technology. So these systems are typically installed by, uh, let's say, uh, uh, telecom, small, or lean, or uh, cost-effective okay, uh, vessels. And it can, they can also be used by uh, uh, third-party spreads or uh, DP2 vessels uh, in, available in the field. And so this system can be repaired, again, by either a telecom uh, a cable ship or by a third-party vessel equipped with a spread uh, for this uh, repair. So typically, it's uh, one week of uh, operation plus time to mobilize the equipment on, 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 the, uh, on the vessel. So this is about the, uh, uh, the um, uh, DAS. So DAS is uh, this nice thing that is to change a, a, a fiber as a microphone. So um, I have just more slides that have, after that one to, to show that it's a more graphical way, but DAS is basically what you do is uh, uh, whenever there is a, an acoustic wave, uh, so a sound, uh, in the water, um, it will uh, do a mechanical stress on the fiber. And by sending an optical interrogation signal in the fiber, we can measure the stress or the elongation of the fiber. And so by measuring this optical uh, signal on the top side, we can rebuild the acoustic signal every meter of the fiber. So doing so, you can measure for troll activity around the cables. You can measure for uh, in the well. You can measure uh, for uh, pipeline monitoring. I will show that in, in the next slide. So that is the Casberg light field. So you can see the well. So injection in blue, uh, production in red, gas in, in uh, so production in green, sorry, and, and uh, gas in red. And you can see the line on the seabed. Now, if we look this, I, I overlay the DCFO system. And so that is DCF already. And from that, what I can do is I can I can indeed I can I don't know if my animation is working. Yes. So I, I can feed, I can bring power to all the templates in yellow. Sorry. I can bring the power to every template in yellow. I can bring power to the uh, uh, AUVs uh, docking station. Now I can connect my fiber back to shore. And that is for my telecom. On the same on the same fiber, I can put my DAS equipment so that I can measure the threats for trawlers and anchors uh, that may aggress my cable. So I can detect these vessels ahead of uh, them aggressing the cable. I can also detect along my uh, DCFO line. I can detect for uh, pipeline pipeline leakages. Then I can also uh, measure in the well, so the, for the well integrity, for the flow assurance, for the uh, vertical uh, seismic profiling, that is for, uh, uh, for the monitoring of the reservoir and to optimize the depression. Then I can also do some overburden monitoring. So to, there I'm simulating a leakage. And, and then if I put my cable with DC, uh, so that's uh, fiber around my uh, well, I, I can detect these leakages. And so just to say that DCFO is, uh, let's say, a standardized and, and lean SMC control uh, system. So for power, comms, and fiber sensing. It is an open platform with a large post supplies to uh, uh, any SPS uh, supplier equipment and so it, at any, uh, any reach. And the standard cross section can be extended and repaired. Um, my last slide. So that is my business card and my contact details. So, and that is the real cross section. It's not a model. Huh? So there is the size of my business card. And so that is the cross section of such a cable or DCFO cable. 